There are new weapons in Assassin's Creed Valhalla that are made of unstable Izu energy. Yeah right, they're just lightsabers and as you expect, they're pretty interesting to use. More noteworthy weapons are added, including free limited time items that you want to get before they are gone, future items leaked that kind of hint at what might happen in year 3. I want to talk about whatever this is, so really a ton to go over. Of course, a like on the video would really help me out, subscribe for way more Valhalla content and let's go. But first, to the sponsor of this video, Bloodline Heroes of Lithos. If you've not tried this game, before then now is the best time because they just launched their biggest update yet including a Halloween event with a free champion and also a big upgrade to their unique marriage system. So in this RPG you have to make the best team possible, upgrade their equipment, battle bosses and other players but the twist is that your characters can also marry each other and create heirs so with talents and traits from their parents. But new is that they can now also have a hybrid appearance based on the two characters that got married. So a werewolf can get demon wings or a demon can get thunder powers. There are a ton of possibilities and more characters are added every month to add even more depth to the system. Including a brand new vampire champion that you can get for free if you participate in the Halloween event. So totally check the game out via the special link in the video description or by scanning the QR codes which will then also give you a starter pack worth $20. It's only available for the next 30 days so you gotta be fast. Thanks to Bloodline Heroes of Lithos for sponsoring the video, helps me improve the channel. Now let's get back into it. I think I know the most used weapons in Valhalla, the one-handed swords, because ever since their introduction more than a year ago now, we've seen Ubisoft add a ton of them to the game. First weapon packs had some variety, but now it's just swords, including the fantastical weapon pack that has some really cool more Final Fantasy steampunk style items. I like their animation in the inventory menu and they have some pretty fun combat effects too, like the furling blade does a fire explosion on a perfect attack, which is of course a skill that you have to unlock. And you then trigger these by timing your attack right, which is at the end of your swing so if you like hit the button at the right time you can have this explosion appear very often and there's also the four pole cutlass variant which has the same effect but with poison damage so pretty cool because we've never seen a weapon perk in combination with the perfect attack skill this weapon pack also comes with the big elemental claymore that has this beam extend out of the blade on the left hand attack you can do it every 10 seconds and when you then hit an enemy you immediately stun them so it can very easily take them out. It can even hit two enemies at the same time, which is pretty cool. But even more interesting and now also available as Helix items are the Vibrant Weapons, which is Ubisoft's way to dodge a legal battle because these are clearly lightsabers. Yes, maybe you already heard it. It has a short sound when you use them as well. The next to the red one, there's also a blue one. And the blades look slightly different per color. Like this, the green one, which is a bit beefier. Now, the pink lightsaber is totally the best. As with this, you have a chance to instantly kill enemies on a light attack when they are below the 60% health. And the chance is 40%. And yeah, as you might know, swords hit really fast. So you will sometimes see enemies just fall down in front of view when they are like at 60% health or less. Other lightsabers have the same effect but for the blue one it triggers on heavy attacks so sometimes you even see like enemies die in one hit which is pretty cool. Like I think this also because of the perk although the special attacks with the red one and the Venge of Thor with the green one are not that great because you will likely kill the enemies even before this perk could trigger. Also worth noting is that it doesn't work on tougher elite enemies and bosses and it also seems to be immune against animals. Overall it's just a fun extra to sometimes see enemies die in front of you while they had still quite a lot of health but it's not really good per se. They're also not in the transmog system yet but that will likely be fixed soon. And high chance that we will at least see one of them at Reda at some point as we ride now till November 1st to see the Thundering Edge in his shop which from another recent weapon pack I think it looks awesome and especially when you go into combat you got this electricity effect that dies down the longer you stay in the fight which then also decreases your crit damage which like bad so you only want to get it if you really like the luck it's 150 opal. The amazing dragon knight helmet is also for sale I think this one speaks for itself it's really cool and I loved rocking it during my recent wild on stream and there are two other brand new items that you want to get before it's too late 
that are rewards from this Oscarea festival that runs from now until November 10th. If you, like me, bought all the items from last year already, which includes the really cool Hell Scythe, that is worth it if you don't have it yet. But again, if you, like me, already played the festival before, then you will only see some Opal, which you can use to buy the before-mentioned items at Reda, and the two new wild weapons. Yes, it's really called Wild Hammer. I think it looks fine on the bronze and silver rarity, but the changes that are added on Mythical, like the fire and the burning horns, really look great. And for the first time, we can get a buff after dismounting with this hammer. Like, if you are early in the game, then these extra stats are pretty nice when getting off your mount near a camp, for example. They're active for 45 seconds, so it's not bad at all. The new flail gives extra attack attack and speed for 15 seconds when using the man's best friend or Irish wolfhound ability so having a wolf companion or the pretty overpowered dog run around it's smart to use one ability near the end of the perk because then you extend it with another 15 seconds and get double the bonuses and you already see it a bit in the combat footage but it's a really cool flaming flail but this on the mythical rarity because just like the hammer it starts out not that exciting so you totally want to upgrade it two times to get the amazing look. And yes, this now means that we've had all the festivals return once during year two. And while it's still not 100% confirmed if these festivals are back in 2023 or actually at the end of this year already because Yule would be around Christmas. And the reloads did leak four brand new mounts that were found in the game files that I think could very well be the new rewards for when the festivals return in the third year. Of course, a link to this video will be in the video description. Here we namely see the Allspinner mount with the skeleton paint, very similar to the tribal stallion that you can get in the connect section of the game. Like this would be the perfect mount for if the Wild Hunt Festival returns next year. While this their mount would be perfect for Ostara which of course the festival that happens around April like this would totally fit that spring vibe and yes this one is totally similar to the mount we had in the mystical pack but now with different flowers and body paint still though for new players pretty cool to get for free around that time well, of course, normally you could only get a deer mount if you had your settlement at level 6. I do need help with these other two, though. We got a bloody white wolf, inspired by the wolf from the deluxe edition, but with extra blood or likely paint as well. And we have a similar viking horse mount that looks pretty nice, but is likely inspired by the Einar horse. So I think they both fit the summer Sigurblot festival pretty well, because the vikings were preparing for war during this festival. But the one has to be for the Christmas-type Yule event. And that's actually not weird because the armor we got during the first Christmas festival had blood stains on it. So I think the wolf kind of winter themed is for Yule and then the horse for Sigur Blood. But your theories are of course more than welcome. Now again, not confirmed that these are linked to the year three festivals. Although I think the fact that there are four and that they are seasonal inspired kind of gives it away. And Origin still runs their Trial of the Gods to this day five years later too. So... Obviously, it's slightly different, but I personally would be surprised if the festivals don't come back at least one more time. Now, I did reach out to Ubisoft regarding the Runeforge, the building they, of course, added with the recent updates, and if there were plans to expand the selection of weapons and armors that are currently available, with the short answer being... No. Like at first, this system where you can extract perks from other items to put them on different weapons and gear sounded really cool, but then we learned that it was only for main game weapons and armor, which almost all have bad perks or not useful ones, apart from Mjolnir and maybe the Sepulchre X. Like if the system included any free post-launch item, or maybe Helix, red items, or the items we could earn during the Season Pass expansion, then it would make this system way more exciting, like way more possibilities would be possible, and maybe it would push people to buy an expansion that they did not have before. But yeah, Ubisoft basically said, don't expect that to happen. So that's kind of sad. There's also still one main game weapon missing from this Runeforge menu, and that's of course Gangnir, Odin's Spear. You can get pretty late in the game. I will leave a link to a guide for it in the video description. Now, if you watch my weekly Tuesday streams, then you likely saw that the rune for this spear is actually in the game files. So I could put the extended range on the Gabolic for example, the other really overpowered spear, 
and it works and looks really cool. But there's a problem and I think this is also the reason why this rune is not obtainable in the game and that's because the moment you rock Gangnir and the rune on a different weapon at the same time, only one of your two weapons will have the extended range effect. And this depends on the order in which you equip the item. The first one with the perk will have the effect while the other won't. It can change on a fast travel and if you unequip the item with the range effect while the other item still has that perk, the Izu effect goes up instead of in front of you. It looks pretty wild. So we at least know why this Gangnir is not included in the Rune Forge, but I do hope they fix it, as using this perk on other weapons looks at least really cool. Subscribe for way more Valhalla content if you haven't already. I will of course keep you up to date here. A like on the video would really help me out. And check out my video, or I should say the one that Joyce and Dennis did on the last chapter that is still coming and some other Valhalla news. You can watch it by clicking on the screen. For now, I'll speak to you soon and goodbye.